world. Um, hi, my name is Mark Sikora. Uh, this is my, uh, my coworker, Thivian. And we're talking about uh, simplifying OAuth 2 in a big data ecosystem. And it is a long title, <laughs> and so it must be important. But um, really, what, what I think our goal is today, oh, Thivian, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm a senior developer at Liberty Mutual Insurance, so, and Thivian? And I'm a systems engineer at the same company. Yeah, so we, we're, both, we're both practitioners of, of big data. I work in data every day. Um, it's, it's an interesting space. It's always changing. Um, but being a developer, I kind of have a mindset of making something um, beyond just the analytical portion of it is the practicality portion of it. It's like you can build the, the greatest model in the world, if, but it's, if no one can use it, is it useful at all? So this is really, we're going to try to attempt to, to, to go dive into a very small aspect of what OAuth 2 is. And it's, it's really a big topic, but we're going to try to give you a little small piece of it that is super useful and give you some Python code. We're going to have a whole gambit. We're going to explain a lot about it. So I think it'll be, it'll be an interesting talk when we're all said and done. And so what the heck is OAuth 2? It's an industry standard for authentication. Obviously, there was an OAuth 1 because there's an OAuth 2. Um, it's been around for a little bit. Uh, we have different grant types. And they're really, when we say grant types, they're really different patterns that you can use for security. So you have things such as like server to server communications. You have different kinds of patterns though. If you have a UI front end, there's lots of ways to boil the ocean. Anybody's program knows that. Lots of ways to code things as well. Um, so we're gonna talk about client credential um, uh, grants today. And we're gonna use JWT tokens, and that stands for JSON web tokens, to gain access to a, a resource. So basically, they're going to be our authentication mechanism to get into an API. So we'll, we'll have a chance to see that. But uh, I'm going to let Thavian go ahead here, here and uh, explain things a little more. I'll let you take it over from here. All right. Thanks, Mark, for uh, the introduction. So OAuth sounds fancy, right? But how does it all work? It's, it, that's a great question. And if you find some documentations online, uh, it's pretty easy to find yourself in the middle of a sea of high uh, level abstract information. So to put things in perspective here, um, I like to use an analogy, and I have to give credit to one of my coworkers because I'm never this creative. And it's something that we can relate, um, you know, w which is flying. So imagine the scenario here. You have, um, you know, Joe, for example, and he wants to take a flight to his favorite vacation destination. But as always, there are people in between him and his vacation destinations, right? And it's not his boss this time. It's, you know, normally the TSA agent and the gate agent. You know, this, this is pretty standard uh, process. So um, the, the agent at the TSA checkpoint will require Joe to provide a proof of identity, right? And if Joe doesn't have an ID or has been driving with an expired driver's license, um, he needs to go to the DMV, right? And I couldn't find a, an appropriate icon, so I just used Batman in that case there. <laughs> um, so he prepares all the documentations that he needs, you know, his legal status here in the United States, um, uh, his proof of address, and perhaps 10 other documentation that, you know, you'll never know why they need, um, and brings it to the Department of Labor, uh, not Labor, Department of Mo Motor Vehicles, DMV. And in, in uh, return, um, the DMV issues Joe a brand new license, which he can use to authenticate himself at the TSA agent. Now, beyond this point, nobody cares about Joe's identity because, you know, at that point, everyone trusts the relationship that uh, the DMV or, or the TSA has against the DMV um, issued identity. And he can jump on a plane, get to his you know, vacation, all is fine. Um, <clears throat> when, you, when you think about this process here, an OAuth process, a typical OAuth process is not any different. Uh, instead of Joe, you have your client, you know, it's a typical client, and instead of the Batman DMV agent, you have your typical identity provider or IDP, and instead of, you know, the paper uh, documentation that you bring to the DMV, you have client credentials, you know, typical stuff like ID, secret, scope, um, authentic authentication URL, and those kind of things. And instead of an ID, the identity provider provides a token. Now, the client can use this token um, as part of its message to authenticate itself against a server, which then passes the request to a routing server that hits you know, multiple services, whether it's on the cloud 
or um, on-prem via the network. So beyond the authentication server, nobody really cares about identifying the client, just as how you would experience in, uh, in the airport, right? So this is at a very high level of how OAuth works, and now um, for the actual juicy part, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll let uh, Mark demo his cool uh, Python application. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I can't argue with that, man. <laughs> and that's pretty cool. Um, OK, so time for a demo. Um, let's use, obviously, we're at a Pi Data Convention, so I'm going to use Python. I'm also going to use Flask as a, a simple lightweight framework for you guys. Um, it's just going to have some endpoints for us so that we can secure something. We're going to use a tool called Postman, and that'll do the request. So we're gonna, that's going to kind of act as our, as our, as our client for, for this particular application. And uh, we're going to use Akka as our, as our actual resource, our resource server. So that's going to be our IDP, our identity, identity provider, because I don't know, we could have wrote that in Python, but Akka has a lot of cool blogs, and they sent me a sticker, so they get a, they get a little bit of a plug. So. OK, let's see if we can get to this. OK. So we're going to just start with, with um, Akka real quick. I signed up for a developer account. I never used this product before. We don't use it at Liberty. It was just something cool. Um, one thing to note is they don't have Python up here as far as the language. I was kind of disappointed. So that'll be in my, uh, <laughs> my, my, my response back to the, their people, because Python is cool, and it should be one of the examples. But they write a lot of good blogs on this stuff. Um, I'm a Spring developer by day, so a lot of their Java stuff has really come in handy. But I'm really a Python guy at heart, so no, don't throw tomatoes at me. <laughs> OK, so we're going to first look at applications, this tab here. Oh, and then Forrest will do the signing again. Okay, so I have an application here. It's basically, it's my Python Flask application. I just created it. Um, and it, it gives you a client ID in secret. This will come in handy later when we're going to ask for a token from this particular server. So I'm just showing you guys this to just give you a kind of a little overview. Like I said, I'm not a guy from here, so I don't know everything about this product, but it seems relatively easy to use. And you can actually, there's Python examples of a resource server too. They're just a little bit more complicated to get going. And a lot of times, if you're in an enterprise environment, you're going to be using a third-party product for, for your authentication because security is going to want to tie in a bunch of different stuff probably to it as far as the Active Directory, LDAP, whatever you have going on. So I have an API that I created through here. And it's going to, it's basically, I gave it an audience. And audience is a port an important part of our token. So when we look at our JWT token, we'll see an audience of Python on there if it works correctly. And if we go inside of here, um, beyond that, to get some more grain inside of uh, an API, there's this idea of scopes. And scopes allow you to basically have a finer grain control of your API beyond the audience. So that's that bit of stuff. So uh, there's a lot of great docs on the Akka site. Um, they have a bunch of information about how to make requests. It's relatively um, legible as far as <laughs> the docs go. Um, I'm used to reading Java docs, so this looks, you know, Compared to that, uh, that's like stand, like reading sandpaper. This is this is pretty good. So, <laughs> um, one of the one of the big parts of this this type of cryptography is the fact that there's a public key. So, if you know anything about public key cryptography, you don't have to know a lot. But the one thing you have to know is that there's this public key, and that's what you use to basically authenticate your token. So, um, just so you can see it, and since I'm on a tab here and I'm kind of in this flow, this is our public key. So, this is on the internet. Anybody can look at it. What public keys are all about. And so this is our public key for it. We'll be using this subsequently in our Python code, which we should be getting to right now. OK. Created a Git repository that has all this code in it. It's, it's really not too much. It, this is a super simple um, project. Uh, the, the, the Flask application that we're going to take a quick look at is really has two endpoints. We have a health endpoint, because when you're running containers, a lot of times you need something to say, like, hey, I'm up. I'm actually good. And the other one is my complicated hello endpoint that says a message, hello. So we're getting to know all you people. So I thought hello was good. And of course, computers are friendly. So, <laughs> um, And so let's go ahead and just run this app real quick so you guys can see it functioning. Um, I'm just going to just say run, or flask run, probably. Start this up. OK, started up a web server. It was that complicated. It's running on port um, 5000 here. I'm going to go to that Postman tool that I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm just going to send a request, and we get a status up right down here. If you can see, I'm sorry if it's a little small. Let me make that a little bigger for you guys. See if that goes. OK, cool. So you see up there, and our other endpoint here, 
that we're going to want to secure because I'm actually I'm not really friendly to everybody. I'm only friendly to my friends. <laughs> so it's like I want I want this message hello to come up, but not for everybody. I want people who have my token to be able to get my warm greeting. So the way I'm going to enable that is through um, just a, a Python class I wrote real quick and. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert in Python, but I, I would think I was able to basically get our, our general flow working. So um, this is just a, an authorization class that sets up everything for, for us, and it takes in a security configuration. So it has um, basically the pass that I want to secure. And so it's going to first, um, anybody with the pass health, I just want to, I'm going to just return that right away saying you're good to go. And anytime it returns, it basically says, hey, you're, you're good to move on. And any exception that pops up from this will basically be caught. And that allows me, if, if this breaks in any way, it's just gonna be like the, the brakes on a train. It's gonna stop and not let anybody through. So if I implemented something bad or some garbage data comes through, it should just automatically deny people with a 403. And it, then it's gonna look for groups and just do some, some debugging here. We should be able to see some log statements saying, hey, is that group present? in, our, in our, our area, and that's analogous to our scopes. So like, if we think of the scope idea, it's gonna be the same as our groups. And we have an allowed all one that was just kind of a nice thing to be like, hey, maybe I just wanna let everybody in. But the big thing comes in with the getting the security certificate that I showed you earlier. Um, that guy really would just need to make another request, and if we don't have it, we basically say, let's just go ahead and get it, and then we just pull um, this, what they abbreviate scope to SCP, pull that off, and then we just look for the intersection of the two and see if it's on there. Um, what's happening though, and in, in, uh, there, there is one thing, in this JWD code step, there's actually some, that's where really all the security bits are being, it's being authorized. So it looks for the audience to make sure it's there and the certificate is there, use public key cryptography and all that good stuff to basically validate that that token has from a good source and that we're not getting something malicious. Okay, so all that being said, great Mark, whatever. <laughs> it's like, you showed me your Python code, it's not as cool as mine, but okay. Um, so now, now we're, I'm gonna, we got, we got that run and I'm gonna switch branches and I'm gonna show you my implementation now with, um, <coughs> with the security config. So I have a security config. Um, that's just uh, dot star, which in regular expression means everything. I want it to have a test scope. And then I'm going to basically um, just annotate another app before request here. And I'm gonna filter every single request coming through here through the authorization mechanism. And if, it, if it, any errors happen through that, if it, something happens where I don't have an authorized, I basically return a 403. So I should be status token. Very good, okay. so. Go here, let's uh, kill that other web server. Um, check out my master branch real quick. And I'm gonna just run, run this again. Very good, so now I'm running that flash server again, but now I have security if it all worked well. So if I go through here and I try to hit hello, I should be getting a 403 forbidden. So I don't have the ability to talk to my, my actual server anymore. So now I have that security mechanism working but um, I, I still wanna be able to actually access that resource. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just get a new access token. And so I'm basically gonna make a request to the, to, the, to the resource server and I'm gonna ask for a particular token. So I have my client ID secret, my scope here, I set a grant type to client credentials and I have my access token URL. So I'm gonna go ahead and request that token and we're gonna look at it real quick. Oh no, what's all this crazy letters and stuff? <laughs> it's like the tokens are, Hexadecimal, so they're not they're not human readable yet. But there's a lot of great utilities out there for for these tokens. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, and I'm going to go over here to this JSON um, JWT.io site, which is a great site. I encourage you guys to look at it. They have a lot of different implementations, and they do have Python here of of different libraries that are able to read these tokens and work with these tokens. So um, I chose one. There's a lot of other great great ones out there, but you can um, you can basically put in that ciphertext here, and then you can start looking at the contents of your token, and I'm sorry this is small, but the major things in here, and let's see if I can get a little bit bigger. Uh, too big. One more time. Okay, so the major things we're looking for, oh, no, it's not popping up, are this audience being Python, so that's analogous to what we had over in the configuration and the scope being test, so and test here. So if the scope wasn't wasn't present in there, it wouldn't work. And the audience is is Python, and those are those are two very important bits of of this token because a lot of times those are configurable 
through a lot of different API calls, so you may have the ability to get those things moved and changed based upon your provider. So that's the only reason I call that out. So now that we have this token, um, I can use this tool and I can just say use token. And so what this is gonna do is it's going to add um, a header entry here where it says bearer and then and it's gonna sh put in that um, hexadecimal string and you're gonna send it along its way and you're gonna get your message hello. And so this is, uh, this is kind of the general flow. Um, let me return to my PowerPoint real quick here and we can take a look at this slide. And it's just, so the, the, the general flow, just to re review, is we had a client application, that was us. We made a request to Akka, our, our resource server. We got back that access token. We put that on our HTTP request. That HTTP request was validated, got a certificate back, it validated that token, and it returned our correct, our correct um, response. And so that was all done with just a little bit of Python code, nothing too crazy or complicated, nothing scary. A lot of times, uh, you know, this, this stuff is put in a weird context, but this idea is a powerful one because it can be abstracted and used all over the place. And so Damien's gonna go into a little bit of, of how it could be used maybe in a bigger sense of the word, but just know that if you, you know, Flask is a powerful tool. If you can get your model to run inside of a, 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 light, a lightweight Flask application, you can put some security in front of it and make sure that, you know, your executives come to you and it's like, oh, I'm scared of your big data stuff. It's like, let's just like hear all the stuff on the news. <laughs> and you can just have a security context around your application. So, good, Damien? Ready to, next slide? Yeah. Cool. All right, so I guess here comes the uh, geeky infrastructure guy in me. Um, we talked about how uh, OAuth works, right? You have uh, users interacting with clients that you know go back and forth with the identity provider to get a token, and then you know the authorization server um, authorizes that uh, token. Uh, but how does it all play in you know the big data world? Well, so out there there's this um, open source um, um, solution called Apache Knox, and I, I do not work for these guys, nor I get any money from them. But um, um, uh, basically, it is a gateway uh, between your client application and any big data services that you might um, have on the on, on the back end. And until, uh, not until recently, um, uh, Knox was introduced with its compatibility with uh, OAuth, which makes things great because now you can um, use OAuth token, or JWT token, to authorize uh, any request that comes through Knox to potential endpoint like um, Apache Hive, so you can run ODBC, JDBC connections to get data from it. Or you can directly put or get data from the HDFS layer. Um, you can run Uzi workflow if you want to. You can do some uh, work around Storm Solar. You can run Spark jobs through Livy, um, and even you know uh, connect the data or or you know transport the data into multiple databases and file system through Kafka. Um, and this is all done um, by having Knox in between uh, the client and the uh, and the backend server. So Knox actually acts as both the authorization server that validates the token that it gets from uh, the client, as well as the routing server, which you know forwards the appropriate request to the um, backend service. So I think that's the last slide that we have. Um, do we have any questions? I don't see anything on the slide at the moment. Yep, and so just, just in general, just to, to, to wrap everything up, it's like OAuth is a super powerful tool, it's, but in, used especially in server-to-server -server communication, which is the sweet spot for the particular pattern we were talking about, it's, it's just gonna be, it's completely valuable to your, to your enterprise solution, but it's also so easy to implement even for just yourself. So if you're looking for a way to have a lightweight authorization mechanism through your, through your application, I, it's like I strongly suggest giving this a, a, a view. And we have no questions, we just wanna thank our host here. Um, you guys are awesome, we appreciate all the food and the, the warm hospitality, so. Thank you guys.